Some of you know that um, in 2013, Greg and I got legally married in the state of California. But it was over 20 years ago that we started to wear matching bands on our wedding ring fingers. Now at that time, I was a high school English teacher. And every morning when I would pull in to the faculty parking lot, I would take the ring off my hand and I would put it in the car's ashtray. Because I was afraid that when I was in the classroom wearing a wedding ring, I would be asked a whole bunch of questions. Are you married? What is that ring? Who is this person in your life? And where other teachers had pictures, framed pictures of their loved ones on their desk, my desk didn't have any of that. And when faculty members in the faculty room would talk about their plans for what they were going to do for their spring break with their families and loved ones, I kept silent out of fear about what other people would think. And I realized, <laughs> although I was a good teacher during those years, I was not a great teacher. And the reason I was not a great teacher was because I was not being my full, authentic self that God created me to be. And what I had done was I had given away my power. <clears throat> I allowed my power to be given over to fear. I didn't claim it. Now the reason I share this with you is because that's what today's gospel is all about. It's about power. You see that on the front cover of your bulletin today. But power is the same as authority. You hear in this gospel that Jesus taught as no one else had taught. That's why people were so amazed. He brought his disciples into a temple and started teaching. And everybody's just astounded. And they say, this man speaks with such authority, unlike the scribes, is what they said. Now, the scribes were the religious teachers. These were the men who were educated. They were scholars of Scripture. They knew the law, and they were great orators. And yet, here was Jesus, a man who wasn't educated, who didn't have any training in the Scripture, who was a poor carpenter's son from Nazareth, and they're shocked because he speaks with such authority. Now we know that there have been religious leaders and teachers throughout the centuries, including today, who are like the scribes. They know the Bible backwards and forwards. You give them any passage from the Bible and they know it. They're great theologians. And yet Jesus says in the scriptures, do not do as the scribes do, because they do not practice what they teach. <coughs> and we have seen great theologians who have studied the Bible for years, who do not practice what they teach, they don't live the gospel message. The gospel message is one of unconditional love for all people, and forgiveness, and peace, and kindness. Now, unfortunately, many of us, although we have a great faith, oftentimes we do not practice what we say we believe. Because we say we have great faith, and yet we give our power over to doubt. And that's what I wanted to share with you today, is I wanted you to think, where are you putting your power? Who are you giving your power over to? Like me as the young teacher, giving my power over to fear. Do you, Give your power over to 
uh, the economy, to the stock market, to a medical diagnosis, to lack, limitation, doubt, worry. If we believe like Jesus did, that there is just one power, we can access that power and put our power there, not in these false teachers. Because to me, doubt, worry, the stock market, those are false teachers. There's only one power, God, and that power is always love, abundance, prosperity, fullness. So the gospel message today is about authority. Authority means when you speak with authority, you are speaking your truth. That's why it's the same root word as the word authentic. God wants you to lead an authentic life, to be the author of your life, to take control of it. That's why I love the words of integration today, because that's what they say, is you have control over your emotions, but most of us feel we are victims of circumstance. And so, we will put our, we'll give our power away, say, to other people. We'll say, ah, oh, he just makes me so mad. You just gave your power over to that person. You allowed them to make you mad. Or we'll say something like, if only my father had been more loving to me growing up, I could have accomplished great things in the world. Well, you just gave your power over to that. Or if you say, who's going to hire me in today's job market? You just gave your power away. We want to do what Jesus says in this gospel, to reclaim your power and your authority that you've been given. There's a quote that Eleanor Roosevelt said, and she said, no one can make you feel powerless without your consent. You have been given this power by God. So if you feel powerless over your emotions or what somebody said to you or what happened in your childhood, well, you gave your consent away. And Alice Walker, who wrote The Color Purple, said, the most common way we give up our power is by thinking that we have none. And many of us do believe that. We think we don't have power over these circumstances and these things that are happening around us, but we do. One of my favorite spiritual books is by a minister named Eric Butterworth. And the book is called Discover the power within you. And I was happy to read in Oprah's magazine a few issues back, she said it was one of her favorite spiritual books of all time as well. What Eric Butterworth says in the book is, there is only one power in the universe, and that power is also in me. And that power is God, the good, omnipotent. <laughs> Omnipotent means all-powerful. There is no power greater than this power. This is the only power that there is. So stop putting your power into these other things. Because those things are false teachers. I love the word authority, and it got me thinking about how in our minds, we have a lot of unauthorized users using our minds. And they're just telling us things that aren't true. Like, you're not good enough. Nobody will ever hire you. You need to worry about having enough money for your retirement. All of these things that your mind is telling you, and they're keeping you from your power and your peace. So we want to get rid of all of those unauthorized users and claim back our authority. And that's why our prayer practice is so important. Because what do we do in prayer? Be still and know. It's the same thing Jesus says to that man with the unclean spirit. Be still. Now, this story about the unclean spirit, 
You may have, as a child, heard this story and thought the man with the unclean spirit was possessed by the devil. Now, the concept of devil is something that is too much for us to get into in this talk, but we will get to that. But what I want you to know is that the word devil comes from a Latin word, which means slanderer. And you all know what slander is. Slander is a false spoken statement. We tell ourselves false statements, and they keep us from our goodness and our peace. In this story, notice what the man said. He was so possessed by fear. He heard Jesus speak with such authority, and he said, Who are you? What, what have you come here to do? Are you here to harm us? So full of fear. And Jesus calms him and says, Be still. And that's what we're all invited to do, is when things are swirling around you, and you're full of fear and doubt and worry, go to that place of stillness. That will calm you. Your soul will find rest in this power. It's not going to find rest when you give your power away to anything but that one power. And that's why prayer to me is so important. Jesus would later say in Luke's Gospel, I have given you the authority <laughs> to overcome the power of the enemy, to drive out demons, and to cure diseases. He said, I have given you, he's talking to you, I have given you the authority to overcome this. And I really want you to believe that. That's why Jesus was different from all the other teachers. Because Jesus lived what he was saying. He accessed that power in himself. And remember what he said? All the things that I have done, you can do. These and greater. Those are Jesus' own words. So he's saying, I was able to overcome this, and so can you. I've given you the authority to do it. So believe it and live it. Now, for me, oftentimes when I'm in prayer, I think of recharging myself and plugging into that power. You know how on your phones, when, you're, when your phone is losing power, the bars start shrinking? And I think that to myself, when I am full of the stresses of life, and worry, and doubt, and fear, and I become possessed by these things, my bars are depleting, and I'm losing the power. What I do in prayer, when I sit in that prayer chair, is I'm plugging in to that one true power of God so that I can be recharged and reclaim that power. And so that's what I invite you to do this week. And what I'd like to recommend is this quote. It's from 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5. And I think it's a wonderful mantra for all of us to use. Today, I make it my purpose to put my thoughts under the authority of Christ. Today, I make it my purpose to put my thoughts under the authority of Christ. That's what I invite you to do this week. When your mind starts going to something other than the power of God to remember, my thoughts are under my control, and I'm putting them under the authority of Christ. There is no other power. Namaste.